the evolving landscape of liver cancer is just incredible to me, how fast things are changing and, and how well our patients have the potential to do now with all the drugs we have available. Uh, you know, with the approval of Lenvantinib uh, in 2018, it left us with some unanswered questions because at that time, we had several drugs approved in second line, right? But that second line data was all done after prior serafinib, right? And, and I think many of us have practiced that if a drug is approved second line after serafinib and we choose lenvantinib front line, then we could go to cabozantinib second line or regorafinib without necessarily having level one evidence uh, that it would work, that, that the choice of front line, how well does that influence second line? Uh, but again, we, we didn't have any strong data sets for all that. And, and now uh, we see more progress. And I, I think the lack of data in certain scenarios does reflect progress. Uh, and now that we have atezolizumab and bevacizumab frontline, uh, essentially IO frontline, and, and I think uh, we have said that the majority of patients probably who are eligible for systemic treatment, this will be the go-to regimen because of the efficacy data. But what does that do for all the molecules we have in uh, uh, beyond that, right? What's the new second line? Uh, uh, Rena, you know, can you put some of this co into context? Uh, certainly because many of the TKIs are VEGF plus, uh, and even ramucirumab, which is approved second line for patients with elevated AFP is a monoclonal antibody to, to the VEGF receptor. Uh, what, are, what are your thoughts on how clinicians are going to integrate all this data? Hey, it's, a, it's a great question, and I, I think, Rich, it's something that um, really remains for us all to determine what's the new sequence or new algorithm going to look like. But I certainly think that I mean, we can make some comments, and one is that you know, your point and Katie's point earlier about the fact that there are other targets for these TKIs beyond just VEGF. So when we think about second line agents and we look at regorafenib or cabozantinib, um, certainly thinking about the Axel and MET or TAM pathways or even FGF, there's certainly other targets beyond what Atizo and BEV may necessarily uh, cover entirely. So I think there's a role uh, still for looking at those agents in second line. Um, also, the question is, you know, will some consider serafinib or lenvatinib to be placed or shifted into being second line, even though that's not where they were studied? Um, and will we just shift our whole algorithm? I, th I think the other part is the question of would you try a checkpoint inhibitor um, after a patient's on a TZO and BEV? And you know, the question there, I think, is, is really what, what is the data? And I don't think we have that data per se. Um, whereas in Celestial, for example, we had patients, at least a quarter of patients who had been previously on um, one or two, or, or on two lines, I'm sorry, of therapy before, and a very small percentage of patients on IO. So we have a little bit of data there, but after um, a TZO, how would you uh, approach using another checkpoint inhibitor, I think is a great question and one that we can discuss as a group. I think if we look at the phase 1B RMF data, I mean, it was a little bit um, lackluster in terms of seeing just the single agent a TZO response. And so um, the other options with TKIs would still be uh, all on the table. 